Springfield's Morning News. I'm Greg Bishop, 92.7 WMAY, Springfield's News and Talk. Hopefully you guys had an enjoyable weekend. We were off Monday after also being off Friday, so we're back at it, and we've got the latest in gun ban litigation to get to, including uh, we'll talk about the firearm owner identification card with a hearing that's set today here in Sangamon County uh, to challenge the uh, constitutionality of the FOID card. But that's in state courts. Let's go ahead and look at what's going on in uh, federal courts in the Northern District of Illinois, where you've got the issue of uh, the ongoing uh, filings that are happening. And let me pull this up so that we can get the latest for you from uh, the uh, Seventh Circuit Court of Appeals in the case of uh, Barnett, which is where all of the uh, various uh, challenges have been uh, consolidated for uh, the the case challenging Illinois' uh, gun ban and magazine ban. Uh, and if you recall, uh, you had uh, on May 12th all of the uh, all of the cases being consolidated uh, from the Southern District of Illinois, where uh, you had the uh, Federal Firearms Licensees of Illinois, you had the um, National Shooting Sports Foundation, the Illinois State Rifle Association, and Thomas Mag with a plaintiff named Langley. All of those cases have been consolidated and uh, moved to the Seventh Circuit Court of Appeals after the, Se- the Southern District issued an injunction, but the state went and got that injunction reversed with a stay from the Seventh Circuit Court of Appeals, and then the Seventh Circuit consolidated the Southern District cases with the Northern District cases challenging Cook County and Chicago and Naperville's gun and magazine ban. Uh, so all of those cases in the Northern District uh, uh, courts, the Seventh Circuit Court of Appeals, uh, will actually have that case heard June 29th. So that's rapidly approaching. But yesterday was the deadline for the um, plaintiffs in the case to file their uh, their briefs. And if you see here, um, we can't yet see what was filed. We know that uh, the Federal Firearms Licensees of Illinois filed a brief. We know that uh, the attorneys for um, Javier Herrera filed their briefs. That's the case of uh, Cook County and Chicago. Uh, And those two uh, filing their briefs, but uh, you can't see uh, what is there because if you note, it says uh, access to this entry is limited to counsel of record once the document's approved by the court. It'll be filed onto the court's docket. So we'll actually have to revisit uh, what exactly uh, the the plaintiffs are saying in this case. And I think that this is a, a crucial Uh, moment here uh, when you've got uh, the state who had filed their briefs and uh, ultimately you've got them saying a variety of different things like for instance uh, the uh, the the uh, firearms that are banned are dangerous and unusual Uh, they claim that uh, the firearms that are banned uh, are uh, allowed to be banned by the constitution Uh, but uh, these things obviously uh, being challenged, and uh, you can think that uh, the, the plaintiffs are going to revert to the Bruin decision and how that impacts gun laws, uh, essentially saying that you can't uh, just ban commonly owned firearms, and the Bruin decision spells out that you have to follow the text and tradition of uh, the Second Amendment. Uh, So how that's going to play out in the Seventh Circuit Court of Appeals still very much up in the air. Uh, But all of this as you've got the January 1st, 2024 deadline, because part of Illinois' law, it, uh, it says that you have to register already owned firearms that are now banned. And the question of the Fifth Amendment violation there that's alleged, uh, that's still something that has yet to go through the courts. But you have the question of, uh, are we going to have this law in place by January 1st when people have to register their already owned firearms that are under this category of 170 different semi-automatic firearms and magazines? Uh, So uh, is this thing going to be fully deliberated Uh, in the Seventh Circuit before January 1st, let alone getting to the U.S. Supreme Court before January 1st. Still some uh, things up in the air. I talked with uh, State Senator Jason Plummer yesterday, and if you recall, he had legislation uh, that uh, dealt with the window of uh, when you've got uh, the, the, the filings that have to happen, right? Uh, and those, uh, those filings, of course, start October 1st through January 1st is the deadline. 
And uh, Plummer, uh, if you recall, during spring session, uh, after the injunction, the six-day injunction window uh, came and went when the the state was prohibited from enforcing the, the gun and magazine ban, during that six-day window, people went to their gun stores and they purchased these semi-automatic rifles, shotguns, pistols. Uh, there were thousands of purchases. I think one number we got was over 8,000 different purchases that happened during that six-day window, whether or not they were the prohibited firearms that still remains uh, unclear and what happens to those individuals who had these firearm purchases during that six-day injunction window uh, that's still unclear as well because state police if you recall uh, and you can go back into the archives of this program and look at all the uh, the conversations we had about this uh, but state police said that those firearms would not even be able to be registered because they were purchased after the enactment date of January 10th 2023 so those would be illegal firearms, state police said. Well, State Senator Jason Plummer, he uh, proposed legislation that would essentially hold those individuals harmless. Um, I asked him about that, but I also asked him about the uh, measure of uh, uh, allowing for first-time nonviolent gun offenders to have probation instead of prison time. Uh, and that was a measure that passed uh, the the General Assembly and could head to the governor's desk. Some speculating that that could wrap up some of these individuals who may have purchased firearms during that six day injunction window, or who are found to have uh, you know magazines that are prohibited or certain firearms that are prohibited. Uh, if it's a nonviolent offense, the law that could be enacted by the governor would uh, ultimately allow for those individuals to get probation rather than prison time. Uh, but Plummer says, uh, you know, combining those things, uh, he, he says there's still work that needs to be done on all of this because of the uncertainty. So, no, the, the bill, um, you know, we're still working on it. it. It has not moved yet. It's not something we've given up on because I think the closer we get to January 1st, uh, the more obvious uh, the problem will become to, um, you know, more people. Uh, as far as the first time gun offender program, you know, that's, I mean, it's effectively a, uh, you know, a, a get out of jail free card to a lot of people who are committing crimes a lot worse than, you know, the entrapment that the governor is, is trying to put them in. Um, so I, I have, I have grave concerns about that legislation. And I, I don't think that that's ultimately a great long term fix for, for people who may or may not ultimately get caught up in this. Um, you know, I, I hope that I hope that we can resolve the matter for the folks who have been caught up, uh, you know, before January 1st and the, 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 the get out of jail free card for people committing crimes, you know, with guns is, is a whole nother story. So uh, Plummer again uh, talking about the legislation that he filed to hold those individuals harmless during that six day injunction window. That measure not moving. Could it possibly move in veto session whenever that is ultimately scheduled? Yeah, I think I think we'll be waiting. You know, I think we'll be waiting till veto session on, on that one. But as I said, the closer we get to January 1st, I think, um, you know, the problem becomes more apparent to people. And, and it's a it's a real problem. So we'll be watching that, of course, closely. Uh, and as I uh, said, the, the filings have been made uh, to the Seventh Circuit Court of Appeals. Uh, but you have those uh, documents not yet approved by the court. Uh, once we do get that approval, we'll be able to review what the arguments are from the plaintiffs in the Seventh Circuit uh, challenging the gun and magazine ban. Uh, so we'll definitely be uh, touching on that here in the very near future. It is Springfield's Morning News. I'm Greg Bishop on 92.7 WMAY Springfield. Fields News and Talk, a hearing happening today in state court in Sangamon County, where you've got a challenge of the firearm owner identification card. We'll revisit a conversation we had briefly with John Bach from Gun Save Life, uh, one of the lead plaintiffs in that case, about what to expect and what uh, the challenge is. So stay tuned. That's coming up here with Springfield's Morning News. I'm Greg Bishop on 92.7 WMAY Springfield's News and Talk. Back at it and looking at uh, some of the latest in litigation against Illinois' gun and magazine ban. Uh, as we talked about the Seventh Circuit Court of Appeals with the consolidated cases and plaintiffs filing their briefs, however we can't yet see them, uh, we'll obviously uh, review those briefs when they are publicly posted to the docket. Uh, but one of the things that uh, we definitely want to also do is just look at where we're at with other issues in that case. And in particular, you've got uh, the Langley case where Thomas Mag asked for a partial judgment on the case back in the Southern District. He's arguing for the law to be struck 
out of vagueness. So this is after, of course, the case moved to the Seventh Circuit, but MAG, using a legal maneuver to try to get judge, uh, partial judgment, uh, that's still s- sitting there. That was back on May 19th when he made that motion uh, a month ago, and uh, we still have yet to see any uh, updated filing from the state in response to that uh, uh, motion for summary partial judgment. Uh, I've also had other people ask me about the Keneally case, and that is the uh, McHenry County state's attorney that sued, and uh, that case was transferred from state court to federal court. Uh, that's most recently um, in the 16th of May, so over a month ago, you had the, the filings from from the state responding to uh, Patrick Keneally's uh, motion uh, that uh, there be judgment on the pleadings. Uh, so that's another case that we're watching. Uh, but that's in federal courts. In state court, you've got the, uh, the the challenge that Dan Calkins brought against the gun and magazine ban. That's still pending in the Illinois Supreme Court. So we'll be watching for whenever those uh, rulings are announced. But in state court in Sangamon County, You've got a challenge of the firearm owner identification card that's going to be heard today. I'm going to do what I can to get there. I've got another event uh, around the same time uh, that was uh, previously scheduled as well. Uh, So uh, we'll do what we can to get you the latest in that case. But the uh, FOID card being challenged and just uh, revisiting somewhat of a conversation that we had with John Bach from Gun Save Life. Uh, He's one of the uh, the lead plaintiffs in this case. And he uh, talked with us um, about two months ago about uh, what this case ultimately is all about and how they're feeling about moving into oral arguments in Sangamon County litigation. So we're in good shape, but uh, we're going to uh, argue that in front of uh, the Judge Mauer there in Sangamon County that, uh, you know, text history and tradition is the new standard for evaluating Second Amendment claims in courts. And of course, there were no FOID cards in 1791. So there's no historical analog the state can point to for legitimizing this unconstitutional restriction of our rights to require people to register, to pay, to exercise their constitutional rights, their fundamental constitutional rights. So this is a case challenging the prima facie uh, on on its face that the FOID card is unconstitutional. Exactly. We're challenging the whole act. And if we're successful, the whole thing will be struck down. And that will end this whole nightmare scenario of the Floyd card, which back in 1968, when when it was implemented, was uh, Mayor Daley's idea to keep guns out of the hands or to limit the the possession of guns by minorities, specifically African-Americans in Chicago. It's a racist uh, gun control law, and that's where its origins origins came from. And that's uh, one thing that we're working today to get rid of because it serves no purpose in today's society. 48 other states, 49 other states have no FOID card, and they do just fine. They don't have Chicago-style violence. They don't have a crime running rampant. In fact, uh, Florida, for example, doesn't have a FOID card, and their violent crime is at a 50-year lows. So again, John Bach, uh, Gun Save Life, uh, that FOID card case going to be heard in Sangamon County today. Uh, we'll bring you the very latest on that uh, as that transpires here with uh, Springfield's Morning News.